Protein synthesis is one of those first topics you learn when you start to study genetics. And students have recently said to me that it's worse than photosynthesis. They find it extremely difficult to learn and are not liking it. So this is a summary of the key details. I'll try and make it as clear as I can. And it's all geared towards leaving cert biology. I break protein synthesis down into four parts and the reason for that is to make sure that firstly it's easy to understand and secondly you learn things in the correct sequence and you have the right amount of detail. So initiation, transcription, translation, protein folding. These are the four steps and then I remember them by saying the rhyme I talk to people. So let's deal with initiation. This is taking place in the nucleus of the cell. So when I say nucleus, let's imagine a plant and an animal cell. There's the nucleus of both of those cells and this is where initiation is taking place. So with initiation, the DNA unwinds and it's enzymes that unwind the DNA double helix. And it's unwinding at a particular place, at a gene, because the whole point of this is to make the protein that that gene codes for. So think of initiation means to begin. So the next stage is transcription. We're still in the nucleus. One strand of the DNA that's been unwound is acting as the template. It's going to be copied. The DNA unwound at the location of a particular gene. The two strands of DNA were separated by enzymes breaking those hydrogen bonds. This allows for one strand of the DNA to now act as a template and a messenger RNA strand will be created. It's taking the information on how to make that particular protein from DNA and copying it to messenger RNA. So the whole aim of transcription is to make messenger RNA, the molecule in blue there in the diagram. And this is all possible because an enzyme passes over each of those exposed DNA nucleotides in the gene and the enzyme is RNA polymerase and it ensures that a complementary RNA nucleotide is added in just the right way, forming a messenger RNA strand. And this is all based on complementary base pairing. One of the big differences between RNA and DNA is that in RNA there is no thymine. So in that messenger RNA strand there is no T, there will be U uracil. For example, let's just make this a little bit clearer. This is a strand of DNA. Imagine this is the DNA that's acting as the template, the exposed strand. And you can see that the first base is A which means that the complementary messenger RNA strand, the first base will be U for uracil because there is no T. Also note that when you look at the DNA template strand, the bases are arranged in groups of threes. These are known as triplets. And then three bases in messenger RNA are known as codons. And triplets and codons code for a specific amino acid. Transcription is over. We have copied the code onto messenger RNA. Now it's on to translation. So translation occurs in the ribosomes and these are found in the cytoplasm. So the messenger RNA strand moves into the cytoplasm. It leaves the nucleus and enters into the cytoplasm. Ribosome subunits attach to the messenger RNA. So the messenger RNA gets sandwiched between these two subunits which make up ribosomes. Free-floating transfer RNAs with complementary anticodons are located in the cytoplasm. And I think this is where everyone goes, this is too difficult because this is the tricky part. The transfer RNAs are where everyone gets lost. So let's just examine transfer RNA and look at what it is. So imagine that this is a transfer RNA, a transfer RNA molecule. At the end of one end of it is an anticodon. It's a sequence of three bases. And at the other end is a specific amino acid that it's carrying or transferring. So this is the messenger RNA. And on the messenger RNA are sequences of three bases. These are known as codons. For each of the codons, there will be a complementary anticodon. There will be a transfer RNA molecule that has three bases that are complementary to the messenger RNA and attached to that transfer RNA molecule will be the specific amino acid. And this is all happening in the ribosome. So this is the translation part of protein synthesis where the code or the message on messenger RNA gets translated and a protein is formed. So how does this happen? Well, when we look at the messenger RNA, there are three types of codon. There's a codon that says start reading the code and then there are lots of amino acid codons, those that code for particular different amino acids. And finally, there is a stop codon, which says stop reading the code, the process is finished. So it's important that we pick out little examination details that might trick us. So let's talk about the ribosomes. They're composed of two subunits. They were made in the nucleolus of eukaryotic cells. So that dark part of the nucleus in the diagram there. And each subunit is made up of proteins and or RNA, ribosomal RNA. So in the ribosome, the ribosome moves along the messenger RNA 
the transfer RNA molecules transport the correct amino acid to the ribosome and one amino acid is attached to the next or another by a peptide bond. When the tRNA molecule transfers or brings the correct amino acid, it then leaves the ribosome and returns to the cytoplasm and can it bring another one of those particular amino acids again. A polypeptide chain, a chain of amino acids forms and this gets longer as more amino acids are added. When a stop codon is reached, no further amino acids are added and the process ends. Translation has finished and now it's protein folding, the final stage. And this is when the polypeptide chain leaves the ribosome. It leaves the ribosome when a stop codon is reached and then the polypeptide chain will simply fold into its functional shape. And you just have to give this a very brief mention, a sentence. Just to clarify, protein synthesis consists of two stages, transcription and translation. We always use I talk to people, initiation, transcription, translation, protein folding to make sure that you answer all of the detail that you might need in your exam questions. Also know that the three types of RNA are examined frequently, know them, and also the three types of mRNA codon. Examined often, you'll meet them in the exam papers. There are lots of genetics definitions and you need to learn them. You need to write them out on cards and be very particular about the wording you use because the examiners will be. Good luck.